Hello, and welcome to the show. Today, we are talking about that big black hole in space, also known as Barnard 68. Unfortunately, this spot has been getting passed around the internet and mislabeled as a hole or void in space. Now, there are voids in space, and I talk about that in another episode, but Barnard is so much more than that. Discovered around 100 years ago by Edward Barnard towards the southern constellation uh, the Serpent Bearer. <laughs> he published this finding along with 350 other objects. Temperatures in this gassy boy are actually super cold at negative 431 degrees Fahrenheit. This freezing temp means that most of the carbon monoxide and nitrogen gases have frozen onto the cloud's dust grains. First, I want to explain something that we don't often think about. The space, all that emptiness, is more like a sponge. If you look into it and see all those fibers connecting with pockets of space, that's kind of how our universe connects. Areas of black matter, galaxies, black holes. Then you have voids that are essentially bubbles of nothing, or almost nothing. But for Bernard 68, it first appeared as a, a hole in space, like not even a void, just some people thought it was like an acme black hole, I guess. It's actually a nebula, or specifically a block glo globule. Globule? Bach globule a big spot of gas that is just 500 light years away from us. It's stretching about half a light year across, but it's not the largest spot globule out there. <laughs> it's just one of the closest to us, which is why it has such a prominent spot in our observable universe. Though it seems super empty like a void, our advancements in technology have allowed us to see it a little differently. When using infrared, we find around a thousand stars. With other sources, we were able to see more than 3,700 stars, and that's incredible. By studying Barnard 68, we see that it moves around like a balloon full of water. And if our calculations are right, this gas cloud will collapse in on itself from the intense gravity in around 200,000 years. This is a great opportunity for astronomers to study the very first stage of how a star is born. When it collapses, it will start to contract and the temperatures will rise. If it gets hot enough, then it will ignite into a beautiful baby star. From what we see now, the center is moving inward while the outer edges are expanding. This suggests that one of two things could be happening. It's vibrating once every 250,000 years, or it's already started its journey to stardom. If you enjoyed this episode, then definitely check out this one to learn more about space. And as always, thanks for watching and what did you learn today? <laughs>